portraits have been around forever. And now with new technology, you'll see them in a different light, literally. They have filters, hashtags, and sometimes a little distortion. You guessed it, we're talking about the selfie. What would you do for the perfect picture? Here is what I wish you knew about selfie obsession. Hey guys, I'm Byron Lewis, and welcome to I Wish You Knew. Millennials are the largest consumers of social media. Our favorite apps like Instagram and Twitter have us plugged in around the clock, and news feeds are always buzzing, trying to keep up with the new latest trends in pop culture. What influence does this unlimited access have on the millennial mind? Here to tell you what they wish you knew are... Mia. Marvin. Wainika. What are your thoughts? How does social media and pop culture influence the way millennials view themselves? I think it influences us because we're always plugged in, so we feel like we always have to be on point. And even if we're not on point, we feel like we have to put on, you know, this aura that we are. So I think it influences us in that way because, you know, we're always plugged in. We can't go anywhere without our phones. Social media is like our family. Like, without it, we're a little off. If you don't check your social media for like a week, you feel yeah, like, I mean, what happened? If, like, what been going on? If so. your phone is dry, that's a problem. But I mean, <laughs> like, looking at it in the bigger picture, like, do, do y'all think like that you're trying to please somebody else, like being on point at all times? Like, I definitely feel like you mentioned Twitter and Instagram. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel like there is a lot of pressure. Like when you look at Instagram, it's, it's, I love the social platform, but it's a community that's real flashy. Like you gotta be on fleek or whatever. You know like, what I mean? To the point that I know some people like, they have an aesthetic with their Instagram. <laughs> like they don't post a picture unless yeah. it goes with the aesthetic. Yeah, meaning the <laughs> color yeah. of it. Like they don't post a... like actual selfies. It has to, like the colors have to match the that's size of the photo the foreground and everything. And the yeah, yeah, so I think, you know, and that's something that we've learned mm. through looking at other profiles and doing what we seen mm -hmm. we like. So again, okay. you get that constant pressure to do what to you look see. The best yeah. that you possibly can. That's just it sounds like too much work to me and I'll admit I'm lazy at some point. So <laughs> I'm not about to set up a whole picture like foreground and back and then duck face. No, that's not. That's not, <laughs> not duck face, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who brought duck face? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it's a part of like the selfie. You will like, never catch box. me with no like, duck face for one. I'm here for the duck face occasionally. You know, some people want to feel cool. You know, some people want to feel cool. Other people use it like a, more of a portfolio for work, you know? Mm. So then the aesthetics and stuff come into play yeah. when Instagram is a business, whereas or it's just a central location for yeah. likes, you know? Yeah, because, I mean, and that's the thing now, social media is a job. Like some people, that that's how they make their money. Mm -hmm. So I get it in that, in that sense, but like for day to day, like for me, I don't take it that serious, but I am conscious of what I post in the sense that um, I don't post anything that is, anything that I wouldn't show my mother almost. <laughs> I don't post just because <laughs> I just can't, I'm not about that life. Like what I can't about, like, be out here. Y'all got like those um, people you follow that are like party promoters and mm -hmm. you get yeah. like those flyers. Yeah. How you feel about that? It's annoying, but I get it. Like, Yo. you got to get your coin the way you get you your do. coin. But yeah. would, you, would you count that as like a business? Like people be like, all right. Yeah. I do every, only every profile isn't a personal profile. Yeah, you know what but I'm like party promoting, I feel like anyone can like sign up and people really be feeling like that's what they do. Like I promote parties. Like you just post a flyer. But you if you're always flyer. if you know people are plugged in, you want people to come out, that's what you have to do. Yeah, I understand if you like the owner of the club and you're doing it. No, like, <laughs> you don't have to be the owner you're of the like club. The club yeah, no, cousin, even like, if it brings not, in people, yes. it is a business. Yeah, but I'm you saying if you the one that's advertising, just posting it. Not you're not sending people out like getting people to come to the club. You're just the one that's posting a fly. You think you a business by posting somebody <laughs> else's fly? Like, I guess. people really do that all day, every day. Yeah. And they're like that's what I do. I'm a party promoter. Mm. Like everybody, I get it. I get it. You, you see what I'm back saying? Back in the day, it was like they had to do the footwork, hand out the flyers. Yeah. Right? yeah, exactly. So yeah. Now, now it's just like post, 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 post. Like, yeah. Uh, I mean, so I guess. I mean, I feel it in that sense. But again, I think they look at it as like, if I get five people to come, I'm good. Yeah, like, you know, so. That's true. That's yeah. true. I mean, I guess I don't really be doing 
too much. <laughs> I like, can't do the <laughs> I can't do the provocative counts that I know. Like you know the people that you actually know, like you went to school with them, mm -hmm. and they post stuff, and you like, but you got two kids, like <laughs> how? Hey. And, so, and, and you just people, posted your son, and now you posting like that though. Like on a selfie, but like, people are considering that art now. Like Ooh. I'm so comfortable with my body, Stay I'm coming it? out of my shell. All right, keep that you art know? in your closet. And, and so I want to become a model and show this <laughs> artwork off to Again, the world. I mean, I'm not saying you got a slut shame if that's yeah, the thing, yeah. like Amber Rose is right. the whole slut shaming thing. But why does why why does a naked body have a woman's naked body have to be art like that they they use that as like to me an excuse an not, excuse yeah right. the be, real excuse is a thirst trap. But what exactly yeah. what is oh, what is slut shaming? That's a word. That's, that's slut, slut shaming is please. like. Basically, when when people see a woman post provocative pictures and then they mm -hmm. like, oh she's a whore, oh she's this, oh she's that, mm -hmm. saying calling her names, mm -hmm. um, based on the way that she looks or the way that she dresses. So basically, they want to be able to do what they want to do without being judged or labeled. I mean, but right? do you you think they, they posted post? up there purposely? Because yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, I'm pretty sure the person who posted already knows what's going to happen. You think they purposely do that just just for kicks or? I think maybe because. You know, you want to call, especially, again, the person who's pushing it is someone who, like, that's her thing. So mm -hmm. she probably does do it for that reason. But, I mean, I'm not a person about, I don't judge people anyway. But yeah. I, you can't dress a certain way, mm -hmm. speak a certain way. Mm -hmm. Like, they always say, if it quack like a duck and walk like a duck, it's a duck. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's not <laughs> a duck. you have people who have, like, these whole internet personalities, kind of, like, kind of what you're saying. You know this person in real life, but, like, online, they're a totally so, like, different person. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I guess in a way that could be their outlet. So you can't really judge someone for being crazy when they like just got the camera ego. set up by yeah. themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. But I mean, I definitely. But see you what you're can, saying. cause you know the real them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, dude, you just it's, got put in a locker. Like, you are not that guy. Exactly. But I mean, I, it, it could be some people. Yeah, it, it can be some people's as, escape. I'm guessing, but I mean, at least make sure your mirror is clean. Yeah, that's, that's all I'm saying. saying. That, I agree. <laughs> that's church. Well, okay. I just say, you know, like, we should know what we're posting stuff for. Are you posting it for you or are you posting it for likes? We have to take a quick break, but stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of I Wish You Knew. Welcome back to I Wish You Knew. Selfie surgery describes a new way to obtain the perfect body without actual surgery. With mobile apps, you edit your photos for whiter teeth, clearer skin, and even larger or smaller body parts. And if that's not enough, a recent study revealed that millennials spend more than an hour a week taking selfies. My God. Panel, help me out. Why have the selfie and photo editing apps become so popular? because there's an unrealistic expectation of what we're supposed to look like yes. when we're online. You see Kim Kardashian, I think too, you have to, people have to look at like the idea of things. So they see Kim Kardashian, they see that she's not famous for much, but she, she gets the man she wants, she gets the money she wants, she gets everything that she wants. So then as a regular person, you start to lust after that same thing. So then you find out, oh, it's not real. She uses Facetune to make her butt look bigger, her waist look smaller. So then people start using it to enhance their photos. So I think that has a lot to do with it. It's just like the times. like. Like I said, when you're online, you want to be your best. So you want to look your best. Uh, so hold up. I didn't you said something about <laughs> teeth, hold teeth whitening. Teeth, and yeah, brush your teeth. You said, I didn't you even said know. butt enlargement. <laughs> I didn't hear nothing said, about that. Yeah. Case in point, you can make things smaller and make things okay, larger. So they're yeah, taking yeah, the waist yeah, in and bringing yeah, yeah. the body Well, here, out. here's a theory. Whatever happened to hard work, go work out. Oh, brush your That's teeth. what I'm saying. Like when you have beauty markets and health and fitness markets growing so fast, just hop on the bandwagon. I think people will be more open to supporting and liking your picture if you're sharing your reality exactly. of like, trying to lose weight or something like, like that. With the plan of That's fitness. true. You know, yeah. but look at a person like again. I'm using the people that are popular, the Amber Roses, the Kim mm -hmm. Kardashians. Their bodies are already sick. Like their bodies look good. Granted, they've had work and they've they've <laughs> been around for, for a while. They right. they obsess over it. 
even they are using Facetune. So think about the average person whose body does not look like that, but she wants that same attention that Kim gets in respect, you know, because she's obviously not going to have 50 million followers. But she wants that same kind of like flow. Mm -hmm. So she's going to do what Kim does because Kim get it popping. Kim, Kim Instagram popping. But look popping. at this. Well, look at this. What, what do you gain from all of those followers? Like, look at Kim. Look at Kim Kardashian, right? Her name has been dragged through the mud for stuff that she did, mm -hmm. all because she's popular. You know what I'm saying? So if I get 50 million, 50,000, however many followers, like that just opens your life but up to, to she's totally different also things. Also considered as the most beautiful woman in America. You know Who's, what I'm saying? But who said that though? What? America. I'm gonna wake up. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> looking at her. I know. You are right. I would not and put I, that title on her. Listen, bro. I mean, no disrespect, you, but look, no, yeah, no disrespect. She you just get another that me. another chick to me. But when you have you somebody look, look, that has <laughs> money, like that, I didn't say all that. Someone that has saying, money look. can afford to look perfect like all the time. Exactly. So that makes you want to be mm -hmm. on fleek, have a bottle shaped body, and but I think that if those are the. If you seen Kim Kardashian in person, she just another chick to you. I mean, mm. like, listen, <laughs> this, this, is, this is me personally, right? I don't know about that. One thing that I don't go crazy over, like, is, is celebrities and just famous people. Uh, you're still a person, technically. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just do what you do and you get paid for it. Like, all right, if Nicki Minaj came in the room, oh, you bad, cool. You, you just bad. Like, I know I have no chance with you, so I'm not even going to try. Oh, but okay. it's kind of like, that's a exactly. Thing so it's, it's kind of like, all right, you gorgeous, blah, blah, blah. But I can go to Southeast and see, like, a gorgeous, gorgeous chick and, like, really, it's just two different sides of the world to me. Like, it's it's not that big of a deal to me, I guess. But for somebody else with, like, self-esteem issues and things like that, I guess it's a totally different ball game. Because what I hear is, like, you get all those people following you. Now it just it just opens your life up to, like, way more. Like, it just makes it more dangerous. Because now they're going to know where you at, what you're doing, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it, it'll create but, a bigger problem for you. I mean, it's already a thing, though. It is our reality. People are more concerned about what Kanye West and Kim are wearing than the politics that you know, are going on in, in yeah. the world. So you become, you know, people become naturally obsessed with the way that they look and then they want to be perfect. So they're using Facetune to make themselves look, in their opinion, better. Um, but the worst part of that all is that, honey, we have to see you in person. So and when I look at your Instagram picture and I see you and it doesn't look the same, <laughs> exactly. I'm confused. And you show up, um, yeah, your profile Your nose picture, is different. You're 30 like, pounds lighter, like, like, are, and you making my, you making this, my car, Everyone like, knows this. Drag, don't like, trust social media uh, photos. No, but that's Snapchat, true. guys, think about the live option to just be right there, and that's you. There, I mean, there are filters, but I mean, you <laughs> can't alter your teeth. I agree. But the, you can't listen, make your skin. But the, yeah, but the thing about that, that is, like, right, look, but the thing about Snapchat is it goes away. Instagram, you got to be perfect because it just stays up there. Mm. Now, you can take it down, but Snapchat, it's, it's gone the next day. You don't got to think about it. Whoever sees it, sees it. If you put a picture on Instagram, apparently you want that to last for That's like, why I don't like a while. But, I mean, that goes back to, like, what is your idea of perfection? Like, if I'm content with what, the way I look, right, like, I'm going to just post, you know, just boom. Either but way, Snapchat or Instagram, like, anybody can still screenshot. They got that picture forever. Yeah, it doesn't right. even matter. Like, you can delete <laughs> it, right or whatever, but screenshots, it's a wrap yeah, for anybody. Screenshot is, like, that's, that's kind of like the, the stalling of the, the new world. The um <laughs> the plastic surgery, like you got teenagers going out getting stuff done for real. Hey, that's, that's new. Again, it's that <laughs> idea of being perfect. I remember because I ain't gonna lie, I'm guilty of watching the Kardashians. I keep up with them. Uh, so when I used to watch that I show, you keep up. and I watched <laughs> you Kim and them, yes, it. like I, you know, I watched it, and I was like, I looked at their little sisters, which they obviously have a different day. I was like, when they get older, they're going to start wondering why my body does not look like my sisters. Why my lips don't look like my sisters. This was something that I thought about like long ago when she had a conversation about her little tape with them. And I was like, when they get older, they're gonna be like, yeah. why my face don't look like hers? Or mm -hmm. why my shape don't look like hers? And sure enough, you can clearly see that through Kylie Jenner in the sense that she started off young and changing things about her, which it's, you have the right to do that. No one can tell you not. Mm -hmm. But at 17, having bigger lips is not like, but Listen, I feel like, honestly, I feel like they, <laughs> they live in like a completely different reality. Totally yeah. different. When you got that their much money. Is, their look mm -hmm. is their money. And you can just wake up and do whatever you want. Like yeah. you see something, oh, 
you can just do that to make your lips but look I like this. But I feel like yeah. even a celebrity, even someone like Kylie Jenner, like we've seen the pictures of her, she was very slender, young. She looked like a young girl at first, but I feel like even they can be influenced by the people in their own circles, like Hollywood people, that make you want to get some yeah, a that's bigger true, butt that's true. or some thicker lips. And I feel like they are guilty. <laughs> they are also <laughs> guilty butt. of being it's easily like, influenced like, by media. In the world, you can just go and that type of stuff. It's just natural. I'm just saying, like you don't gotta go under the knife to look. I mean, that's just me personally. And let's be clear, getting injections is not plastic surgery. That's just a procedure. So right. So question: <laughs> Would you guys rather use a app to alter yourself or? Get something done if you had something that you wanted to I would change. I say none of the above. Hard, hard work. That's that's what I'm in with. Um, now that we've talked about the issue, when we come back, <laughs> we shift gears to talk about a few solutions. Don't forget to follow the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag JustBeYou. Ray's tall, dark, and handsome, and People Magazine's world's most beautiful are only two examples of how society sets the tone for what's popping and what's not popping. But in spite of those messages, how can we get millennials to know that beauty is only skin deep and what's inside that counts? I think it, is, it comes from like finding somebody in your world that you know is is beautiful or or something about them that you admire rather than taking it from what you get from media and television and making that the standard for beauty and don't be so i think it's very important to teach people not to be so um shallow mm -hmm. because beauty is it's skin deep in the sense that to me, being pretty is, is from the outside, but beautiful is something that is inside. It's yeah, your spirit. Yeah. It's how you are. Like, I noticed that with women. When we usually admire a woman, is because we just like how, what she stands for, who she is. Her That's like yeah. me with, like, um, Kerry Washington or um, Maya Angelou. I just think they're beautiful people because I like... I like their hustle. I like what they went through. I like who they are. So we just have to teach people the difference in, in, in that. Because, like I said, our generation is very sh kind of shallow, very yeah. superficial, face mm -hmm. tuning it up, not keeping things real. So yeah, Two feet generation. Yeah. But uh, I, mean, I think people need to learn that it, it's a difference between being attractive and beautiful. Yeah. Like, those are two terms that get taken totally out of context. It's like, you can look amazing but yeah. like be the most heartless person in the world. That's not beautiful, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And growing up with all the social media and all that other stuff, you're, you're taught that these pictures are beautiful, these pictures are gorgeous and blah, 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 and you take that word beautiful totally out of context. Mm. Like, it's not, even, it's not even what it means to just be attractive. No, it's something totally different. And it's like, but who, 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 who teaches that? Like, where do you go to learn that? You know what I'm saying? Like, let's say your family doesn't teach you what beauty is. Let's say your family is just all caught up in vanity and looking the best, but they don't teach you what beauty actually is. Like, where you go to learn that? Well, at the end of the day, like, I feel like that's something, like, especially after grade school, high school, like, I'm 21 years old. I'm not, you gotta figure out what beauty, be, beauty means for yourself. Like, that's something you just gotta yeah, yeah. kinda I, 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 take to yourself definitely. and to totally, your own matters totally and learn agree. on your own. You can't really let anybody, anybody else's opinion like affect Deter. your yeah. perception of beauty. That exactly. just sounds kind of ridiculous I mean, to me. To, to yeah. that, I would say, I mean, I grew up with, with imperfections, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, stuff happened, people said stuff, blah, 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 but I didn't let that stop me from my end goal. You know what I'm saying? I didn't let that stop me from doing what I love. And I think once you, it's, it's not necessarily easy, but once you find something that you like, once you find something that you love, once you commit yourself to something, mm -hmm. That's, that, that defines, like, what, what your beauty is, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think vanity is bad. I think, like, self-love and self-development is very important. Like you said, like, you got to figure that out for you. Mm -hmm. And it, it becomes a, a thing, like, when you go to share something, like, are you doing it for you or exactly. are you doing it for someone else's response or how um, people are going to react to you? So I feel like you just got to love yourself and believe in yourself. And with that comes real actual confidence. Mm -hmm. I, you know? I think for me it came from, if I'm honest, I guess I'm very cliche, but for me it just came from the good book, the Bible, because 
<laughs> well, you hey, learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about yourself and what you're supposed to be through that and not the superficial things. And mm -hmm. one thing that always resonated with me was what's in the heart, the mouth speaks. And um, sour water and fresh water cannot run from the same well. So what you speak is what I was always taught. It, that develops beauty. That's who you are. That's what's mm -hmm. inside. That's what you harbor. So those are the values that were instilled in me. So that's why today I can appreciate um, when somebody has a beautiful spirit and when they're actually beautiful and not just being superficial. Mm -hmm. Another thing in our generation is like, let's think about marriage. I think we get caught up in beauty in the way people look when it comes to marriage. And we will learn that in about five years when these people are getting divorced after you realize that he's tall, dark, and handsome, but he doesn't like know how to do anything else. <laughs> other than be cute. He doesn't know how to wash uh, laundry or do anything else. Um, yeah, I know how to do laundry. You really just took but, us uh, to church. Yeah, she, she took us she to church. Took <laughs> church. Hey, I feel like I need to go right now. Okay. Like, like, she just, I she just, <laughs> hey, praise him. Uh, well, yeah, I, yo, that, 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 the marriage, like, peace on that, like, I've, I've seen, like, so many people just, like, get married because she's this, get married because she's that, get married because she's this. But, like, a few years later, it's like, now y'all separated, y'all got a kid, blah, 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 and all this other stuff, because you mm -hmm. just, well, you were just with that person because of how they look. Like, what does that person do behind closed doors? What are you know their what true colors? What, exactly. What are, like, what do they truly look like? underneath this whole social facade. And actually there's a science to it. I think in, within three years, it's like a chemical that happens um, when you're in love and it stays Dopamine. present for like three years. Yeah, something, something I'm sorry, I don't know the technical term. Oh. <laughs> but um, it's like a, a little t a term that it stays around for those three years. And after those three years, it starts to wear off. Mm -hmm. So I think people get caught up. Some, uh, back to church again a bishop told me he was like people be like i want a divorce because i'm not happy he was like who told you you was going to be happy every day when you marry mm. that's not real that's not real so at all. i think we have to get away from just we have to make it more apparent that being imperfect being imperfect is okay like it's it's not a necessity but with our instagrams and everything we're going to keep it popping we're going to keep looking perfect and i think we're going to continue to fuel that little like a demon, if you will. That's a fact though, like what you said about the bishop, how can you expect to be happy every day when you're married? It's like, if you don't wake up every day happy by yourself, like how you expect you to wake exactly. up every day in a relationship? Somebody else. Be, you know what I'm saying? Like a nightmare. You missed your call in my yeah, <laughs> Relax, <like>. relax. <laughs> relax. Uh, but I, the word imperfection kind of stuck with me because like when you separate the two root words, it's I'm imperfection. People need to separate mm. that stuff. Mm. Like, I mean, I'm gonna yes. get philosophical for you, but Time now out. people just need to, to separate that word imperfection and realize that you are perfection. Like, you you can't be, you can only be as perfect as you believe you are, bottom line. Like, mm. if, if I think I'm like this awesome, like amazing person, I'm not gonna run around and be like, yo, I'm better than everybody else. But if I think that I've reached a level of perfection, then be happy with that, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be content with that because I know who I am. And you know, then you, you gotta find out who you are. Just a lot of people don't do that. You, be Just yourself. be you. Stop, like. stop relying on your idols to feed you because that's not what they're there for. That that's not you don't don't idolize people. Idolize yourself. Be the best person you want to be. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself, and no one will let you down. It's okay to like people, mm -hmm. but don't let them define your life for you. Not even your parents. Figure that out for yourself, yeah. and you will be okay. Like you won't depend on other people's opinions. Yes. Take that journey. <laughs> that's all the time we have today. I'd like to thank our panel and all of you at home for watching. We'll catch you next time. But before we go, Mia, what's the word? You know, Eleanor Roosevelt once said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. 